Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte has apologised for his country's historical role in slavery, calling it a crime against humanity. For 250 years, hundreds of thousands of people from Africa and Asia were enslaved and sold by Dutch merchants. The Dutch had an extensive colonial empire, including at different times areas in Southeast Asia, Africa and, of course, the Americas. The slave labour was used throughout its colonies and the proceeds from the slave trade helped fund the country's 17th century golden age. Now, government ministers are visiting seven former colonies in the Caribbean and South America today. Prime Minister Mark Rutte gave a speech on slavery in The Hague. It's just the latest step in a long and heated debate over the colonial past of Netherlands and its role in slavery. Reminders of this chapter in the country's history are easy to find. When Jennifer Tosh walks through Amsterdam, she sees her history on the walls. She's a direct descendant of people enslaved by the Dutch. Now she takes people on walks to show them the past that is hiding in plain sight. Well, it's everywhere. I mean, where we're standing right now is at the heart of what's referred to as the Golden Bend, the wealthiest part of the city where the founders of the Dutch East and West India Company and the Society of Suriname, where they lived, and they had their mansions here. People like Tosh, whose families come from enslaved people, have spent decades pushing for an official apology for the past and the damage it did. The fact that the Dutch only had a small share of the transatlantic slave trade should not matter, she says. The Dutch have centered themselves so much as exceptional, not like the British, not like the French, not like the Portuguese. It's given this impression that, well, we weren't so bad. Yeah. We only had 5%. Compared to world history, that's not that much. And it wasn't here. It was always somewhere else, out of, out of sight, out of mind. That sort of nostalgic mm -hmm. way of romanticizing history has left people thinking, well, what's all this fuss about reparations? The Netherlands was among the last countries in Europe to abolish slavery. Before they did, it's thought the Dutch enslaved more than half a million people. Historian Pepin Brandon thinks the impact of this remains. Slavery could not exist without a motivation why it was that white Europeans could not be enslaved, but black Africans could be. Right? So there is an, a foundation of racism uh, there that has its, its uh, long legacy that we still live with. Dutch Black Lives Matter protests in 2020 helped shine a light on that racism. An official apology would be a good move forward, says Tosh. It is an important step in the process, but we can't stop there. In terms of education and real societal understanding, Tosh says the journey has just begun. Well, DW special correspondent Aya Ibrahim is in The Hague and following the Prime Minister's speech. Uh, Aya, could you tell us more about the tone of the speech today? His tone, his one message out of the speech today here in The Hague was, this is just the beginning of a conversation. Uh, the Prime Minister acknowledged that, you know, the process that led up to this day has not been easy, that it's been fraught with challenges and that it could have, in fact, gone better. This is clearly an allusion to the fact that in, you know, in the run-up to this apology, there have been some controversies, especially with uh, descendants of the formerly enslaved who say that they were not consulted sufficiently. There was, in fact, even a, a court case, an attempt by some communities of, uh, uh, of the descendants of the formerly enslaved to, uh, you know, get this apology cancelled or, or, or stopped. So it was definitely, the tone was... Um, this is just the beginning of the conversation. He said this is not a full stop, this is a comma. He also, you know, spoke directly to, uh, you know, the Dutch people and said, even I had, you know, at times struggled with understanding how we could take responsibility for a crime, a historical crime like slavery. So definitely that of continuation and also trying to appeal to the Dutch public to, to, to rally behind this apology. You spoke to it a little bit, Aya. There was a long debate about how to go about this official apology. Why was that so hard? I think this is a common theme when it comes to Western European countries, uh, you know, trying to apologize for these atrocities. There's always the question, well, what next? What are we going to do for the communities that are affected by this? And the key word here really is reparations. Are Western European countries really willing to compensate uh, the communities that are affected with uh, money? A lot of them still suffer from systemic uh, poverty. I think it's also, you know... Um, 
this is an issue that is, you know, exploited, oftentimes uh, used by the right wing in Europe. Uh, it's been accused of being a wokest trend, uh, a topic that just follows a certain trend. So certainly it's not been easy uh, getting a unified message on this. Yeah, now, it's only just happened, but how are the slaves' descendants taking this gesture, taking this apology? A lot of the ones that we have spoken to have said that they welcome this, certainly, that it's a good first step. But as I mentioned, there's always the question of, well, how does this affect me? How does this affect my community? So far, the messaging from the Dutch government has really been, let's try to, you know, shed light on this history. A lot of projects are set to be, um, you know, um, announced here in the Netherlands. But uh, with communities really in these former colonies, the question is, is how, how does this really benefit us? And so far, the Dutch government has not really given a concrete answer to that other than dialogue and cultural projects that are yet to be concretely announced. DW Special Correspondent I. Abraham in The Hague, thanks so much.